Hey everybody, welcome in. So this is a, a an interesting video today, you know. Nobody does the work we do on this type of topic. An interesting video today, you know, winners and etc. So let's jump in. And today was a bit of a weird Fed day. My limit order in Bitcoin just missed. Ugh, right, right before I go live, it dips down to twenty five two, and it's kind of well, you know, that's what Bitcoin does. But really, I'm going to talk about why it's so special. So, first of all, this video today is entitled Peak Whole Coin Status. And the question is, are we at that status level? Is Bitcoin reaching its ultimate peak? Uh, and this will be a roller coaster ride. This will be super, super interesting. And what I'm trying to address is have we reached the peak of whole coin status, i.e., the maximum number of whole coiners that could that could be out there? And it's weird because every day I'm in the community. And Patreon, and uh, people get so nervous because of all we've been through in 2022. It's like, you know, people make a little bit of profit. They immediately want to sell and buy back in cheaper. But we'll talk more about that later as well in the psychology. And of course, this video is just edutainment. Big thank you, Silicon Valley Stoic. And if you want to amplify your intelligence, I promise you, nobody does the work we do. Nobody has the data we do. And if you do want to amplify your intelligence, please subscribe. But if you're happy to give your life over to AI, well, so be it. I'm just trying to help people here. Now, the inspiration for this video is from this guy. His name is Adam Back. He's an OG in Bitcoin. And he was at a conference discussing the concept of peak whole coiners. Hence, the inspiration for this video. And the speaker believes that we may be reaching a point where it's no longer possible for new people to become whole coiners as the price of Bitcoin continues to rise, even though it may not seem that way right now. But over time, that's what it does. And they spoke about Glassnow data having 1 million UTXOs with over one Bitcoin. But remember, some people have four, six, ten wallets. Uh, I believe there will never be a beyond a certain number of Bitcoin. I'll share that number with you as well. The peak top, which I've calculated. And, you know, it was really fascinating to think about how all of a sudden He's a Bitcoin OG, and all of a sudden, he's talking with his colleagues and looking at Glassnode data and saying, well, we have 1 million UTXOs with 1 Bitcoin plus in each. What would happen if we went to 10 million whole coiners? And the answer is, well, the answer it dawned on him is, it'll never go to 10 million. It can't, because even if you go a little bit beyond where you are now, it'll put the price of Bitcoin so out of reach that they will never be able to get in. And again, it's a super interesting thread. It's a bullish thread. And I'm going to go through all the detail that you've never seen anywhere else. So first of all, I've been obsessed with Bitcoin because of its hardness since 2017. And one of my earliest videos, this is me, <laughs> two years ago, uh, when I was a lot younger. Um, but I've been a maniac uh, trying to gather as much data around Bitcoin and who owns the Bitcoin, how many there are, how many are lost for the longest time. So I've got like six years of data on this. And I'm going to share that with you now as well. But remember, okay, this is a jigsaw puzzle. I do not have access to people's addresses, but I have assembled what is probably the most comprehensive list of who owns the Bitcoin. Some are bang on. Some were bang on, but they sold or added more in between. Some are educated guesses based on anecdotal evidence. But let's jump in and go through all of who owns the Bitcoin. Then we'll go to the likelihood of them selling. Then we'll look at analysis of what it takes in terms of buy pressure to drive up the price by increments of $1,000. Then we'll look at the number of global millionaires on Earth and how I believe that's going to grow for the magical reason of debasement and a whole bunch more on what it takes to be a whole corner today. So let's talk about who's got the coins. First of all, I'm going to go to my list of top individuals. And again, this might be off. And I do stand back where I can. But you'll see names on there. You'll know like Bill Miller, Barry Silbert. Bill Miller had half of his net worth. It was worth $1.8 billion into Bitcoin. But he lost a lot shorting Tesla at 106. So for that reason, I ratcheted down his numbers. But there's a lot of numbers behind here across all these different individuals. Again, you can pause and look at it at your will. Also, we have a category called lost coins. Again, I've made a video about this. Uh, it's very, very important. So here you can see the actual Bitcoin lost equates to about 4.961 million Bitcoin or 28.6% of the supply, which is kind of terrifying when you think about it. But again, just like the people who own the Bitcoin, I put a lot of work into aggregating 
how many have it. In addition, let's look at some funds that have coins. Yes, technically, and this is what the guys argued as well, Adam Back, you could own a whole Bitcoin by having, you know, shares in a fund or shares of MicroStrategy or a miner or an ETP or something. But do you really own the Bitcoin? And that's the big question as well. So these are some of the funds that have a lot of Bitcoin. 3IQ has 16,000. BlackRock apparently have 30,000 Bitcoin. And uh, they could have, have a lot more. Guggenheim, 44,000. One River, Ruffer, etc. But these funds aggregate to about 325,000 Bitcoin. Again, a little over half of what Michael Saylor has in MicroStrategy. Then we have ETFs and ETPs. Again, not a comprehensive list. But Grayscale is a big one there with 635,000 Bitcoin. You've got other ETFs, about 103,000. CoinShares, 37,000. Purpose ETF, about 23,000. They total up to about 800,000. Again, it's approximate stuff. Also, public companies that have Bitcoin on their balance sheet, apparently. Citibank has a little. Fidelity probably has a lot. They've been mining for nine years plus by my records, but I don't know how much they have. JP Morgan Chase have at least 10,000, despite the fact, if you listen to the CEO, he thinks it's a Ponzi. But yeah, they have some. Uh, Mass Mutual, 5,400. MicroStrategy, 140,000 on the nose. NASDAQ, at least 10,000. NYSE, 10,000. Square, 4,700. And the Tezos Foundation. 25,000. So that's just a little more. Then you have private companies. Block one, 164,000. You got Mt. Gox, who will be distributing those coins as well very soon. You have others, about 11,000. Tether, apparently a 52,000 Bitcoin. Uh, so again, it's not comprehensive, it's not perfect, but just to get a handle on exactly how many we have. Then we have governments. This will get some people's attention. Chinese government apparently has 194,000 Bitcoin. Uh, from different sources, mainly confiscation. Uh, also, El Salvador, 9,500. The FBI and the US government combined have 205,000 Bitcoin, and they do sell Bitcoin regularly, sometimes to private investors. Finland, the government of Finland has 1,981 Bitcoin. <clears throat> Georgia, the country, not the state, has 66 Bitcoin. North Korea have about 30,000, again, probably from confiscation from all the scammers that do hacks out there. And the Ukraine has 46,351 Bitcoin. They probably have a lot more after all the donations. So it's just a little bit of a summary. Then we have wrapped Bitcoin, another category. You have wrapped Bitcoin, 156,000, and then wrapped Bitcoin in smart contracts, 103,000. And of course, all this stuff fluctuates. I'm just going to give you a handle on exactly, again, to stress, it's an approximation, it's a guesstimation, it's a jigsaw puzzle of numbers. But I do believe... There's about 8.4 million Bitcoin in some way or another tied to funds, etc., individuals, high net worth individuals, governments, private companies, public companies. And that's just where we are right now. In addition, uh, a visual of what that looks like, the most important thing is the lost coins are nearly half of the total amount that I can allocate for. Individuals own about 21.6%. Uh, private companies, 4.7%. Wrapped Bitcoin, 3%. Uh, public companies, 2.7%. ETPs, ETFs, about 10%. Funds, 4%. And governments, 5.9%. Thank you, MT, for being there. So that's kind of what it looks like. Now I'm going to talk and switch gears about exactly how Bitcoin can come back into the system and just share some data points. And again, I'm building a jigsaw puzzle here but I'm missing some of the pieces. But one thing we do know is 72% of Bitcoin is held by long-term holders, and that just hit an all-time high, and these people are reticent to sell. These people understand economics, supply and demand. They know the supply is inelastic. Therefore, as adoption grows, the price will go, go up, and that's what they're waiting for as we go forward. In addition, another anecdotal piece of data 8.16 million Bitcoin have not moved in four plus years. That's a big chunk of the pie. Again, a lot of it simply doesn't move. And it doesn't move for many reasons. One, people don't want to sell. Two, people have lost their keys just sitting there on chain. Nothing can be done about it. And many other reasons too. So this is where I go into what I call my buy pressure analysis. And I've been modeling this too, because I'm always trying to figure out exactly, okay, if $100 million comes into the system to buy Bitcoin, what will that do to the price? And how does that change over different price points? Very important, because if Bitcoin's $10,000 and somebody pumps $100 million into it, it's going to have a big impact. If Bitcoin is 
30,000, you pump 100 million in, less of an impact. If Bitcoin's 100,000, less of an impact again, and a million dollars less of an impact too, because the overall market cap gets bigger and bigger, and therefore $100 million is less and less impact over time. So let's run through this analysis. Again, you won't see this anywhere on the internet, but here is what I call my buy pressure math. And you can see here in this example, if Bitcoin is at 30,000 and the buy pressure comes in at 100 million, by the way, a lot of the work, I was able to calculate this from looking at the Elon Musk Tesla purchase of $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin when Bitcoin price at 30,000 and the impact of that. So I could create a ratio. And that's why I anchor on this 30K number. Now, the impact of $100 million is an increase of $1,000 in Bitcoin price. So if somebody pumps $100 million into Bitcoin network, the price will go up a thousand bucks to 31,000. Now, if you do that at a quiet time where there's not many market makers, not much action, not much volume, it could go a lot higher. But the point of that is the Bitcoin price uh, is 30,000. Market cap is 580 billion. The buy pressure is worth about 0.02% of that market cap, but the impact on price is 3.33%. And that is a multiple of 193 times the dollar amount. That's the big takeaway here. And that's what I analyzed, because I'm trying to estimate, okay, what happens if all the millionaires on earth try to come in and buy Bitcoin? Where will the price go? So let's do 100,000 and let's look at the numbers here. Again, we've never been to 100,000, so it's very difficult for me to estimate, but I do have a very sandbagged approximation. If you pump a billion dollars, not 100 million, but a billion, and the Bitcoin price is at $100,000, the impact on price will take it up by at least $1,000 to 101000 That multiplier is 19.35 as we go forward, okay? So that's kind of closer to my, I always talk about 19 being the bare minimum. So if somebody puts in a million dollars, the market cap will go up by 19x as we go forward. In addition, next one is what happens if the Bitcoin price is a million dollars? Market cap, 19.3 trillion. And that's assuming the same amount of tokens are today. Buy pressure, 10 billion, not 1 billion, 10 billion. Again, you can see here, the impact on price will take it up to $1.001 million a token. And you can see the impact on price of that type of buy is very small because it's only 0.05% of the market cap and the multiplier goes to 1.93. Again, in reality, it'll all be about exactly how much is available, how many people are selling, what the status is of the price, where it came from, etc. as you go forward. But putting all this together gives us some very interesting data points, which I'll weave in later as well. So how does Bitcoin get to a million dollars? Because that's we know it's going there. It's just a question of when. That's, that's the magic number. So there's four things that I see will drive Bitcoin to $1 million. One is... If Bitcoin is adopted by a large number of people and businesses, it'll drive up the price. Number two is increasing scarcity, which we have because people are losing their coins all the time. And we know the total number ever to be mined is 21 million. But as you know from this channel, there'll never be more than 14 million Bitcoin. And as more Bitcoins are mined, the supply will decrease. And this leads to an automatic increase in price. Also, institutions if large institutions such as hedge funds and pension funds start investing in Bitcoin, it'll drive up the price big time. And that will also deny many whole coiners. And finally, government regulation. As governments start to regulate Bitcoin, it could provide more legitimacy to the cryptocurrency and make it much more attractive to investors, especially endowment funds, pension funds, retirement funds, etc. That will be a game changer. So that's going to happen. We just don't know when. That's why the big players like the Black Rocks of the world and the Fidelities are already making moves in this regard. So let's go back to Metcalf's law because it's all about adoption at the end of the day. And the key takeaway here, and again, we're going to be talking about a million dollars a lot, but in this model, which we built, and in our conservative Metcalf's model, assuming the, the existing adoption continues, this puts the price of Bitcoin hitting about $1.25 million in the year 2030. Again, a little over 1 million, but again, that assumes adoption continues. But if anything happens, like I just mentioned in those top four items back here, it'll happen a lot sooner. Let's talk now 
about my sandbag prices of Bitcoin in the halvings. Let me get back to answer the question, have we reached peak Bitcoin hole coiners? So this one is kind of my sandbagged uh, price at or close to the halving. This could be like six months after the halving date, okay? It's an approximation. So the first halving, Bitcoin price was 32 bucks. Second halving, 1200. Third halving, 19,745. Fourth halving, which is coming up, ladies and gentlemen. I believe within six months of the halving, we could hit $81,858. And it sounds kind of crazy when Bitcoin is now under 26, but that's less than, that's basically a 3X from where we are now. And remember, adoption is increasing and supply is inelastic. Fifth having 424K and sixth having 863,000. So if the fourth having is happening in 2024, the fifth having is happening in 2028 and the sixth having is happening in 2032. Again, these are sandbags. Some people think it'll go a lot higher. And the funny thing about the internet is no matter what you say, people will be trolls and they'll be toxic because they, oh, that's too low. Or they say, oh, that's too high. Nobody's ever happy, but these are sandbagged. And I would, I'd be very confident in these numbers going to these halvings in the future. And I, I am I hope I'm around to look at these numbers and compare them to how my estimates were, because these haven't fundamentally changed for years, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, thank you so much. So more charts, more numbers to come. First of all, another dimension to this whole thing is how many millionaires and billionaires are there on earth? And there's more than you think. So, you know, a lot of people uh, back when I was a kid, the dream was to be a millionaire. Now it's no longer as significant. But let's look at my numbers, my IA forecast. I do believe by the year 2026, there will be 97.9 million millionaires. And that is a very, again, sandbagged conservative assumption. So let's call 97.9 million millionaires. One. 100 million millionaires. That's a lot. And how does that happen? This way. Due to the half-life of fiat cash. See the way all the story weaves together? Uh, out of initial value, so that this is what the half-life time value decay, you know that if you have $100 after 10.47 years, it'll be worth $50 of purchasing power. And that is just how it works. And as they increase money printing, this will accelerate. No ifs, ands, or buts. That half value will go to nine years and then maybe eight years and lower, lower, lower as you go. So that's why, because the term millionaire is a million dollars, the half-life goes down. Therefore, the number of millionaires goes up. That's where I get this from. Even if you look at the new debt ceiling, they're adding four trillion in two years. That's 11.6% debasement, which they'll do very quickly. So that's the math behind that. Now let's look at the combined wealth of all the Earth's millionaires and billionaires. I broke them up because trust me, I'm getting to a point here in this long-winded way, but I got to back everything up with data and numbers. So today there are 62.5 million millionaires. The average net worth of a millionaire on Earth is $1.4 million. Combined wealth is $87.5 trillion. The billionaires, there's only 2,668 billionaires on Earth, but their average net worth is four and a half billion. So they are a lot higher. It's interesting to see how, you know, the higher you go up the food chain, the more the wealth explodes. You know, the 1.4 is very close to a million dollars, but the 4.5 billion is a lot more than 1 billion. And that's interesting as well to me. And their combined wealth is 12 trillion. You add them all together. And would you believe it? This is so bizarre. $100 $100 trillion in wealth across these 62 million people. $100 trillion with 62 million people. 8 billion people on Earth. It's nuts. But that $100 trillion is very like the 100 million millionaires in the future. So this will also grow as we go forward. Okay, let's now hope I'm not losing anybody. And uh, again, it's a lot of fun here. So this is now, assuming my buy pressure math, which we walked through about how much comes in, and assuming an average of a 19.3x multiple, what would happen if the billionaires and millionaires decide to allocate a tiny bit of money towards Bitcoin? And this is the answer. If the billionaires and trillionaires decide to invest 0.1% of their net worth, that would pump the price immediately to 99,000 plus call it 30, $130,000. So this is the price addition based on my multiplier. 
if they allocate 0.5% of their net worth to Bitcoin, price will go to a half million dollars. And if they invest 1% of their net worth on average across all of those millionaires and billionaires, price would go to $1 million. And I, when I was running all these numbers last night and all day today and over the last few years, I never thought I'd see so much um, confluence across numbers like 100 million and 100 trillion and all this. It's just really, really bizarre. So, But it's not, it's not made up. So based on this, this is one of the key magic numbers, going back to Adam Back's question, are we at peak whole coiners? Well, this is the magic here. I do believe the max number, max percentage number of millionaires that could become whole corners by 2026 is only 3.38% of them. Call that 3.38 by 2026, which is of 100 million people, which is not very many. If anybody wants to drop a comment below, do the math on that 3.38% times 100 million people or pull out the exact number and you get extra points, which is this 97.9 million. Uh, Again, that is the theoretical maximum that could ever get to whole coin status. But I have news for you. That's not going to happen. And I'll explain why with more numbers. But the math behind that 3.38 is this. So if you imagine, and this assumes people are willing to sell. So the Bitcoin accounted for is 8.4 million. The Bitcoin left to mine, 1.65 million. The balance is 11 million. I believe that 30% of those that are out there may sell, only 30%. That's 3.3 million people. As a percentage of the 97.9 million millionaires, that is 3.38. And that also assumes that these millionaires all buy linearly. They don't all rush in at once or millionaire number one buys a ton first. Because if millionaire number one goes in and buys 100 Bitcoin, he denies another 99 millionaires. And that's the magic here. In addition, more numbers, Bitcoin per millionaire in 2026. Again, assuming nobody else has any Bitcoin, no sailor, no microstrategy, no corporations, no governments. There is only 0.141 Bitcoin per millionaire in 2026, which is very little. If you are a millionaire out there, if you get that much, you'll have more than your average millionaire buddy at the Yacht Club as you go forward. Now, remember who is buying. Let's go back to more data, more numbers, another glass note chart here. This is the Bitcoin accumulation trend score. Remember, it shows that over basically most, uh, well, since April, the 10,000 plus whales have been stacking. That's the blue there across the chart. All the others, all the red there, 10,000 Bitcoin and below, they've all been selling for two months, two and a half months. And what does that mean? Well, if they're selling and the big guys are buying, a lot of people here in the retail area and the 10 below, etc., the 20 below, low, below 100 Bitcoin, they all think they're going to buy back in cheaper later, unless they're snagging it right now where the Bitcoin price is. 25,000. Ooh, real close. Real close. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy what's going on. But that's kind of the interesting thing here is every time a big fish or whale buys a lot, they deny others. A view of this is, for example, MicroStrategy purchases, uh, if they buy 140,000 Bitcoin, which they have, and the average Bitcoin per human on planet Earth is 0.00175 Bitcoin. That means when MicroStrategy do that, you know, 140,000 buy, they are denying 80 million human beings the average Bitcoin per human. Okay, just, just to put things in perspective. And MicroStrategy is one of hundreds and hundreds of players that I mentioned before. And not only do they deny uh, 140,000 um, or 80 million people, the average, but they also eliminate 140,000 true whole coiners as well. So let's go to the conclusion. It's kind of uh, crazy numbers. I'm a little bit out of breath. I don't know how long I've been going. Half an hour already. Wow. Uh, let's talk about how things move fast. And this is kind of the you know, I, I do believe in hedging and not keeping things and selling things, but make sure you sell at the top and not at the bottom. And give you a little perspective. I did a retire on Tesla video. And if you assume the, say, for example, the IA low, which is the bear case for me by 2032, you could have bought a retirement bag for $21,831 six months ago. Today, that bag is 53548 to retire in the year 2032. So it's gone up. 
It's gone up 150% more expensive or 250% more expensive to retire just in, in time. So we don't know when Bitcoin is going to pop, but it is going to pop. And that's where it can be dangerous for people. I think Adam Back, and the reason I mentioned this, he said, my biggest fear is if I sold and tried to get back in, I wasn't able to get back in, that would give me nightmares. In fact, Michael Saylor has said the same thing. So let's talk about demand and supply in the conclusion, because this is also very, very important. And what people sometimes don't remember is demand finds supply all over the world, with the exception of two things, time. Time is not infinite for us. Also, the supply of Bitcoin is not infinite. But if you increase the price of gold, miners will dig deeper and find more, or they'll fly to space and hit an asteroid. Point number one. In addition, in really emphasizing the perfect or the near perfect inelastic supply that Bitcoin has, and remember, inelastic supply means that the supply of a good or service does not respond to the change in price. No matter how much you increase the price, it's not going to impact the demand. Okay, But the more the adoption goes, the more the price will go up. And this is what's fascinating about where we are today with this inelastic supply. Also, now my new math in terms of whole coiners, because people technically can, can still become a whole coiner by buying a proxy like a GBTC or a MicroStrategy or a HUD8 or many other uh, options out there. But right now, and I'm very confident of this, there will never be more than 416,054 whole coiners. And that is 0.005% of the world's population. And that population is dwindling because every time somebody big comes in, like those 10K whales I just showed you up here, when they snag a little, he's gone. And they're denying others. And that is the key thing as well. In addition, only one Bitcoin, not only rarefied error, but you being the top 2.5% of all Bitcoin holders, and the top 0 0.004, 0.005 of the world population, depending how you calculate it. And remember, I believe there will only ever be 14 million Bitcoin because so many are lost. Okay, final thing. And this is how the wealth get wealthy and accumulate wealth is they don't sell hard assets. They keep them. And I know we've gone through a very hard time where there were scammers and fraudsters out there and everything else, but there will come a time in the future where you can borrow against your Bitcoin. In fact, I know of a bank that will let you use Bitcoin as collateral when you when you go for a loan or mortgage. So you might say, well, I've got 20,000 in the bank and I have another property, but I've got 10 Bitcoin. They will give you some credit for that 10 Bitcoin. And that is interesting. So the whole concept of people, oh yeah, I'm going to sell at the top and buy back in when it goes down, There'll come a day where that won't happen because everybody will be able to live off it and borrow against it, hedge it. They'll have the wits about them to be able to hedge it correctly. So there's no need to sell and incur capital gains taxes and things like that, depending on, of course, your jurisdiction. Uh, and this is what's interesting. Now, final point. Remember, <laughs> the whole idea from Adam Back was maybe, you know, there are 1 million whole corners. The answer is no. There's only 440 or 440. What did I say? 411,000 of them. Let me make sure I got this number right. 416,000. This is Metallica playing Enter Sandman in front of 1 million people in Moscow right before uh, it was kind of liberated. This is kind of incredible. But that will never happen. That audience will never all have a whole Bitcoin. Just for perspective, that's, even though a million people is a lot, it's not that much in this asset. So I'm sweating. That was a big one. <laughs> so this is the moral of the story is get some, everybody. Bitcoin is so rare. Yes, the pricing sucks now. Uh, we are still down. We went down as far as, oh, we went broke 25K. Woohoo. Um, but over time, it goes up as it gets adopted. Remember, we've got some big clouds. And this is the time as well where it's actually the best time to stack. So with that, everybody, thank you, everybody on Patreon. Uh, thank you all for being here. Hope you enjoyed peak whole coin status. 416,000 is my latest number. Never more than that will ever exist. If you have a whole coin, keep your security locked down and then be grateful. So thank you all for being here. Appreciate the mods in the chat. And... Uh, Hang tough. See you all tomorrow. Bye.